Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. This week. Oh my god. What in the world was this week at college football? Game finally just wrapped up that Stanford Oregon game. Finally, finally finished. So we can finally get through this and get this uploaded and everything like that. Um, let's start with the midweek games, the Thursday and Friday game first. Now, um, I was watching Utah State BYU in conjunction with the Miami Cincinnati game. Of course, if you know what happened in the Miami Cincinnati game, then I'll talk about that on Monday. But the BYU game was interesting because Utah State had a backup quarterback in, and they were taking it to the act. They were taking it to the Cougs in the first half. I'm not gonna lie to you. They they were taking it to them. But again, you know, this is Utah State that just this is a Utah State team that hasn't done a very good job at all this year of just playing very well, and they left some points on the board. They you know, the backup Cooper Legas threw a pick six. And then, you know, Utah State did nothing in the second half. At Jaron Hall, at Coog's run game, which finally got going, they overwhelm the Aggies and put them away. BYU in actually a pretty good position now. Again, with the way things went today, they, they might be in a good place, you know, come next week. Washington at UCLA again. This is a game I highlighted. I, I told y'all something was going. I told y'all something was going to go down on Friday night at DTR with one of the smoothest, one of the smoothest plays I think I've ever seen in quite some time. Man's, man's just by stepped multiple Washington uh, defenders, and they both crashed into each other like it was crazy. And that wasn't the only thing. The Duke transfer. Tight end Jake Bobo, he, he he helped DTR torch the Huskies defense. We're talking UCLA was all over Washington in the first half. Now, Washington did get close, but again, those picks that Michael Penix Jr. threw, which, I mean, there were some bad ones like that. They even threw multiple interceptions in this game, and at least one of them was just absolutely terrible. Like, he was just... I I, gen, I was genuinely angry at one of those picks. But again, you know, the run game for UCLA was able to close this one out. Again, it, was, it felt like the South Alabama game for a second there, which is what I was worried about. But that's okay. UCLA used their run game. They closed it out. They beat the number 15 ranked Washington Huskies. And the Bruins are still undefeated. And guess who's got a big game next week? UCLA. Good on them. They're going to be right next week. I guarantee you that. Um, and this was the beginning. You thought Friday night was crazy. This was just the beginning of ranked teams losing. Because, again, this is the start of really separation Saturday. Kentucky Ole Miss started the noon slate. And I got to tell you, Chris Rodriguez, I didn't expect him to be back. I, I really didn't. I, 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 I was surprised. And, you know, Ole Miss, they did just enough in this game. They really did. That defense was on point. You know, offense at times could get anything going. But that defense, oh boy, they stopped Will Levis and company when it mattered. We're talking multiple fumbles. Included a game clincher in which Willa Levis got stripped, fumbled, sacked, you know, and in the last few minutes of the game, you know, and it was just, it was just, it was just that bad for Kentucky. You know, they, they could not convert in the red zone. Multiple, multiple special teams mistakes. I mean, there was a missed kick. There was a missed extra point in there. There was a botched, you know, PAT attempt. It was just it was just bad for Kentucky. It felt like Kentucky had control of this game, but they squandered all their opportunities. I mean, again, they left five points off the board at least. And Ole Miss, again, they did just enough in this game. You know, just enough because it again it felt like at times that Kentucky should have had this game. 
But yet Ole Miss's defense was just a little bit too much for him. And Ole Miss, big time W. 5-0 and oh, Ole Miss. Good on them. They're moving up in the rankings for sure. Kentucky going to fall down a little bit. There's still an opportunity for Kentucky, but it's not going to come, you know, this week. It's not going to come for y'all this week. There's still an opportunity there. Big time games coming up for the Wildcats. Still, Georgia and Tennessee are looking at Kentucky like, oh, this may, this may be a little bit easier now. But we'll see. We'll see how, how that goes. Kentucky down the road. Ole Miss, got to feel good right now. Got to feel good. You know, you got Vanderbilt next, so should 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 be should be too much of a problem. You know, now that you got Jackson start, you know, really cemented as a starter, things should be a little better. Michigan, Iowa, really nothing to see here because this game was absolutely boring. We're talking, again, the Hawkeyes offense is an absolute clown show under Brian and Kurt Ferentz. They, they, they slowed Blake Corm down for only a little bit, but he got he still got over 100 yards and a touchdown in this game. Like, come on, stop it. Like it, it Again, it was 20 to nothing before Iowa finally said, hey, we have offense, we can actually play offense, and then just proceeded to have one of the weirdest four quarters I think I've seen in quite some time. They score 14 points in the fourth quarter, but they also did one of the dumbest things to try and get back into the game. You know, with a like a, a short pass on fourth and goal that didn't even make the first down, and then you had offensive pass interference after that. Just like what what even is the point? The surprise was indeed that Oklahoma TCU game again. I wondered if Oklahoma's defense was actually going to get it together, and they did not. Max Duggan torched this Oklahoma Sooners defense. Oklahoma is going to fall off the top 25 completely. And, I mean, Dylan Gabriel got knocked out. We got another injury in this game that I forgot about. There were multiple bad injuries today throughout the sport of college football. My, my goodness, man. And, you know, this OU defense just got outclassed. We're talking these wide receivers for the Horn Frogs were continuously wide open. Like, how you how you let the Horn Frogs put up 668 yards on you? This is not the Brett Minimal's way. I get it. You know, some of these guys are still from Lincoln Riley's regime, but that doesn't matter. We were we were expecting we were expecting something. I, I I don't think these were the first two games I expected OU to lose. I think we were expecting an OU loss next week, you know, next Saturday. But I'll I'll I'll, I'll get into that next Wednesday. You know that game if if somebody is ranked. You know my Longhorns, but I probably uh, they probably won't be ranked. But we'll probably talk about the OU Texas game anyway, just cause uh, this is just not it right here. Like Oklahoma, I expected Oklahoma. A lot of people expected Oklahoma to lose at least three games this year, but I don't. I just don't think these were the first two games they expected them to lose, and I didn't expect it either. But. This defense is terrible, man. Defense is god awful. I mean, Max Duggan did the exact same thing Adrian Martinez did. Ran all over OU. <laughs> Threw it all over the field to these wide receivers, wide open wide receivers, and it was just too much. Texas Tech K State. Adrian Martinez, Deuce Bond, just a little bit too much in the fourth quarter. Tech fought. Because they were down 20 to nothing too. You know, they had the game tied like going into the fourth. But again, Wildcats were just too much in the fourth quarter. They had, they, they did more. They did more in the fourth quarter to win this game. And then you got Minnesota getting upset by the Boilermakers. I, I kind of I figured something like this was going to happen. You know, Purdue had right teams. 
a fitting combination because, I mean, the Boilermakers picked off Tanner Morgan three times in this game, and that boat is not rolling anymore for the Golden Gophers. Now, there was an injury to Ibrahim, but, I mean, that, that, that may have been a factor, but in the end, does that really matter? When Tanner Morgan got picked off three times, with the Boilermakers were able to do just enough on offense, two touchdowns on offense, to win this game. Yeah, not a factor. Get on out the rankings, Minnesota. Oregon State took on Utah, and although it was close, it's like 21 to 16 for a hot minute. Cam Price and company said, I right, bet. And then dropped 21 straight points. The Utes defense took the ball away from the Beebs four times, four interceptions in this game. And, I mean, they, they just did look back after that. Utah is going to be a top 10 team, you know, come Sunday. They're going to be in the top 10 come Sunday. It's going to be one hell of a fight between Utah and UCLA next week. It's going to be it's gonna be real good. It's going to be real fun to watch. It's going to be real fun to watch that. Going to be on Fox all day, I guess. And Oregon State, you know, the promise of a... Uh, you know, the promise of, like, you know, that undefeated Beebs, you know, thing that was that was a thing. Yeah, it's not happening anymore. It's going to be okay, though. going to be okay for the Beavers. Maybe they can still make a bowl game, but I, 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 they had way too many issues that started. Again, Oregon State had so many issues. Again, you, 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 you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fresno State like that in the first place. Again, that was where it started, you know, so... Tough titty. Tough titty for the Beebs. In the afternoon, we had Alabama, Arkansas. The, the big question, again, another injury that may have derailed the game for a little bit. Bryce Young hurt his shoulder. Still don't know what in the world's going on with that. Is it a sprain? Is it going to be out for like a week or two or three or four? Who knows? Alabama still got tough tests ahead, but they pushed Arkansas aside like it was nothing. Because I mean, that first half was just a clinic. It was twenty-eight to nothing, and then Arkansas said, "I bet you know Bryce Shug's out. We can do something now." And you know the Hogs made a critical run at it, putting up twenty-three straight of their own. But once the backup Jalen Milrow got in and Jameer Gibbs. They ran all over Arkansas. Oh my goodness. I thought, you know, we all thought the pass defense for Arkansas was pretty uh, suspect because Bryce Young was already throwing it all over him. Yeah, he threw a pick, but he was throwing it all over the Hogs defense. But then, you know, the Tides running game said, hey, we back. We, re we resurgent out here. And Milrow and Gibbs just ran all over Arkansas like this is a disappointing loss for the Hogs you know again you know the week before against A&M just a disappointment all around and now this game against Alabama just just not just not what you want to see Oklahoma State took on Baylor and Spencer Sanders did just enough ran for 75 Got a nice near 200 pass through the air. And that Oklahoma State defense is legit, man. Defense picked off Blake Shapin twice. There was a big fourth down stop. You know, there was a kick return touchdown as well. I mean, they caused the safety and, you know, held the Bears scoreless in the fourth quarter. Because that third quarter was wild. Uh, like, there was a lot of points in that third quarter. Like, what, 39 points in that third? But that fourth quarter, defense came to play. And Oklahoma State is in a very, very good position. Baylor got to be feeling disappointed in themselves right about now. You're still in the Big 12 race because, you know, it's the Big 12. But playoffs? No. Playoffs? <laughs> playoffs? No, no, no. Any potential for that without the window. So, Baylor... Not in a good position right now. And then Wake Forest, Florida State. 
I think I was watching this game the most. I was flipping back and forth between the other two uh, ranked games. But I kept my eye mostly on Wake Forest, Florida State, because the Knowles, for whatever reason, they couldn't trust their kicker at all. You know, you think the Iowa State thing was bad because Iowa State's kicker missed three bad field goals against Kansas. By the way, undefeated Kansas TCU next week. I think that's going to be something good. But, you know, this Florida State team is not back. It's kind of unfortunate they're not back. And, you know, all that hype has gone completely downhill. Jordan Travis, yeah, he played, you know, efficient for time, for moments in this game. I wouldn't say times because, I mean, I don't know where Wake Forest's defense came from, but they came to play against Florida State. Sam Hartman and them deep wide receivers were just out there doing what they do best, you know. Throw up a lob and the, and the Demon Deacons will catch it. <laughs> they will catch it. And Wake Forest, you know, again, after last week's disappointment, they really turned on the defense in this game against Florida State. Good good on them because, I mean, I, I, I think we all thought this Wake Forest defense was really, really bad. And they said, hey, we're going to play a lot better this week. And that's exactly what they did. Penn State, you know, they played very poorly in this game with, you know, the I mean, Northwestern caused five turnovers. But then Northwestern countered and said, we're not going to do anything on offense, and we're going to turn the ball over ourselves three times. So Penn State, sloppy game. They still win it. Ohio State, they trailed Rutgers for like two seconds. There was a skirmish between Greg Schiano and Ryan Day, but that didn't matter because Biden Williams ran all over the Scarlet Knights. Five touchdowns for him, 189 yards on the ground. Oh my goodness, man. This Ohio State team said, hey, we, we can't just use C.J. Stroud. We got to get some other people involved. And Biden Williams is one of those guys. Again, you know, the Buckeyes are still kind of itching a little bit, but I mean... They got playmakers everywhere. And Mike Williams just said, I'm bulldoze these Scarlet Knights today. And that's exactly what he did. Just, it, it's going to be okay, Rutgers. It's going to be okay. You're, you're going to live. You're going to live. You're going to be fine. And oh boy. Oh, I'm happy about this result right here. Jimbo, Jimbo, Jimbo. Oh, Texas A&M. You paid all this money. A&M to go out and lay an egg against Mike Leach and the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Like, there were just so many things wrong with A&M in this game. Like, like this, this team looks lost. Turnovers everywhere. Forum to fumbles. Uh, to picks. And Emmanuel Forbes is really the guy out here today. I mean, he blocked the field goal. Took a pick six back to the house, you know, helped this Bulldogs team keep this Aggies offense contained because I mean, the Aggies just look, again, they just looked lost out there. Will Rogers did, he did just enough. Three touchdowns to the air. The run game for the Bulldogs was able to keep, you know, the Aggies run game, you know, like the Aggies run game didn't do anything. But the Bulldogs run game, oh yeah, that did something. They did something today. A&M just... I mean, it's been a disappointing season already. But I think we all know how many losses they're going to have. And, you know, it's going to be at least four. So, get prepped for another 8-4 and four season, A&M. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you to have four losses at least. I'm rooting, probably even more. Because it's A&M. You know, Jimbo Fisher does not deserve that contract. He really does it, man. He really does it. I mean, how you have the number one recruit glass and you fail miserably in multiple games. Because again, they probably should have got blown out by Arkansas last week. They should have. They got lucky last week. That luck ran out today. 
And that luck is not going to help the next week, probably. But we'll see about that. And in the evening, uh, what in the world happened, Missouri? You had this game. You had Georgia on the ropes. Georgia, I don't know what in the world's wrong with y'all. Like, Kent State may have done something. They may have done some damage to y'all because y'all had a skill issue out here. What's going on with y'all? The real MVP of this game was Harrison Bevis, the thick kicker for the Tigers. I mean, he was 5-for-5 five five on kicks tonight, including a 50-plus yard. I don't know where some of these kickers are, you know, kicking 50-yarders in college now. But I guess that that's starting to be a thing because I swear I keep seeing kickers make 50-yard kicks every week, and I don't know why. Hashtag college kickers, man. But unfortunately for... For Missouri, their offense could not do a damn thing. Just absolutely horrid in the worst times where you probably didn't need Harrison Bevis out there because you should have tried to score touchdowns instead of field goals. And I mean, Stetson Bennett again, he looked lost most of this game. Like, he just, he just, he just wasn't that guy today. Again, I don't even know what in the world the Heisman race is looking like now, man. The running game, they got they got it together in the second half. They got it together late in the fourth quarter, really, and that helped Georgia get themselves out of a sticky situation. So two weeks in a row, Georgia's been in a sticky situation to where they haven't played very well. Probably probably just just moved them down to number three right now. Just moved them down. You you can you can interchange Alabama and Ohio State that wanted to, but Georgia Georgia needs to be number three. They should have been number three last week. You know, move them down, move them down, please. NC State and Clemson was the biggest game of the night. <laughs> you know, top ten matchup: DJ Uilagale versus Devin Leary. Two great defenses. And Clemson's defense did more without Brian Brisi. I might add. He, I don't know what he was out for. I, I know it was something, but he was out for this game. And, I mean, we luckily had the three touchdowns in this game. Just, just out-dueled the Wolfpack. I mean, again, that defense, without Breezy, I might add, caused two turnovers in this game. And I mean, just NC State could never get anything going. They had opportunities there. You know, NC State did. But, again, Clemson in the second half just was just too much and it's just a disappointment for the Wolfpack all around like this is not what you wanted after last year's big win against Clemson you needed to you needed to beat them two years in a row and you didn't do that you just laid an egg in the worst possible fashion because that second half was horrid by NC State horrid I I don't even know how they scored in the second half, but they 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 barely scored. I mean, they got some garbage time points, but the game was over by then. It was thirty to thirteen by that point. You know, Clemson's offense did just enough. All they needed to do was just do enough, and that's how it happens. Clemson's still gonna be in the top five tomorrow, or rather today, technically, because it's Sunday. Pitt, Georgia Tech, I don't think anybody expected this result. Brett Key, you got, you got, Pat, somebody pat Brent Key on the back. I hope he got a good Gatorade shower because Hassan Hall, Jeff Sims, and the rest of those backs, it felt like, you know, it felt like Paul Johnson was out there coaching again with the way this running game was running all over the Panthers defense. Like, how do you let this happen, Pitt? Keaton Slovis and this pit offense played like garbage <laughs> until garbage time. Played like garbage out here. Like again, it was nine to seven going in the fourth, and you just let the running game for the Yellow Jackets just zoom past you. You got you got to be kidding me, man! You got to be kidding me. Pitt had promise, and. They they did not deliver. Another ACC team not delivering. Wow, I know, right? Crazy stuff. And in the late games, there's really not much to talk about here. 
I mean, Stanford just got whooped by Oregon, Bo Nix, that Ducks running game. Too much. Too much for Stanford. But USC still very concerning. They're undefeated. They beat Arizona State. That doesn't really matter too much when your O-line is just not protecting Caleb Williams. Your defense still. Because again, Arizona State scored on their first three possessions. You know, yeah, the second half, Arizona State didn't do anything, but that first half, absolutely terrible. And that's not going to win you games in the future against better competition. Got to get that defense under control, USC. Got to get it under control. You know, I don't know what it is about Lincoln Riley not getting things under control. You know, because it's been it's been a habit of his having a very good offense. No defense. And, you know, the additional bad thing now is that, yeah, the offense is explosive, but that O-line is not there. And it needs to be. Because Caleb Williams finally turned it over tonight. He threw a bad pick tonight. Or, uh, it, was, it actually wasn't a bad pick. It, was, it, it got... It, it, was, it, it was a pick. It, it doesn't matter. It was a pick. You know. So, so Arizona State, you know, Stanford, like these, and Oregon State, you know, some of these other teams, the Pac-12, these are not the teams you should be worried about, USC. You shouldn't be having to worry about these games, but yet you're making us worry. You're making us look stupid out here, and you're making, you're making us look like, is this really the number six team in the country? I don't think this is the number six team in the country, but... Hey, the polls are going to erect them at number six tomorrow anyway. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. I expect you, I expect Utah and Oregon to jump into the top ten at least. Maybe Ole Miss, you know. Uh, you know, so, so, so there's, there's going to be some teams in the top ten tomorrow. There, there's going to be. Got ten top 25 teams losing today, which is a lot. Again, a lot of separation. A lot of teams are going to be moving in. And I don't know what the world week six is going to look like. I think I have a couple games highlighted. I think I have a couple games highlighted for week six already I, that I know of. But we'll talk about week six on Wednesday night when I get back from subbing. And I'll see you all on Monday. Yeah, baby. We're going to talk the NFL on Monday when I get back. Do a little work, watch that Monday night football game, and then boom, we'll be talking some of that sweet, sweet NFL. Don't go anywhere. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, do whatever you need to do. And again, I'll see you on Monday. Good night.